Hey guys, welcome in. I'm April Honey. If you know me from my other channel, my main channel, April Honey, then welcome. I'm happy you found me here. If you're new here, welcome in. I hope you're doing amazing today. So one of the biggest questions that I get asked all the time, even out when I'm out and about, is why I'm in a wheelchair. Now, I know I don't look like anything is wrong with me, and unfortunately, looks aren't an actual marker of whether or not somebody can actually walk, but unfortunately, I am, or not unfortunately, I don't feel like it's an unfortunate um, reason, but I am in a wheelchair, and I'm a full-time wheelchair user, which means that it's not a something I do to save energy or anything like that, it's uh, something I do because I, I just can't walk. So I have a CMT, which is Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease. And it has nothing to do with sharks or teeth, but it is named after the three French um, scientists who discovered the disease. There are like a million different variations. You can read a little bit more about it at the CMT Foundation or the CMT Association website. It is under the muscular dystrophy umbrella, but it is a neuromuscular disease, which means it kills off the nerves first and then the muscles follow. So there's a lot that happens with muscle memory and you keep your function sometimes long after the nerves are completely without signal, which is what happened in my case, actually. Um, before I was in a wheelchair and before I finally stopped being able to use the muscles in my lower body, I was tested um, neurologically. There was no signal going to my legs, but my muscles just kind of ran off of memory. I had like no balance and I couldn't really feel the ground underneath me. So it's a little, a little like walking on a boat, but um, the muscles still kind of functioned a little bit and I could walk with leg braces. But eventually that completely died off. Um, the muscles in my legs just decided they weren't going to do it anymore. And it was almost overnight, but not really because it is progressive. Um, and I ended up in a wheelchair. Um, being in a wheelchair has its own challenges. I'm not even going to get into that. If you want to hear more about that, let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to talk to you about just life in a wheelchair and how that goes and what that means for me, how I do things. If you would like to see vlogs, let me know that as well. So it's not the worst thing in the entire world. I have CMTX, which is mostly found in males because women have two X chromosomes. But uh, for me, I was just one of the lucky ones. I inherited on both sides. I have an entire GBJ1 gene pattern deletion, which means the gene was completely deleted. Um, it's not there. It doesn't exist. And I have type 1, which means the myelin sheath was actually deteriorated. And that's the part that transmits the signal from your brain to your legs. So that was the part that was diminished. And it means that basically that I just can't feel my legs <laughs> is pretty much what that means. It does affect your hands too. So I am experiencing some neuropathy in my hands. I can't really feel my fingertips and anyone who tries to like get blood or a pulse through my fingers can't doesn't have a whole lot of luck, but it that isn't as progressed and it's not bothering me nearly as much as it is in my legs. Now, I do only have like three really working fingers in both hands, but I don't know. For some reason, the way your body works is that when things happen gradually, your your body kind of comes out with compensations for that. So I noticed I started picking things up like this instead of pinching it like a normal person would with their fingers like that. Um, I stopped doing that a while back and I didn't even realize it. It was one of those things that my body kind of compensated for and I didn't even realize I was doing it. So whenever I pick up something heavier, I don't do it with my thumbs because my thumbs are very weak and they can't actually grip. So I didn't know that that was a thing that I was doing. And also my hands are more often closed than open because it, it's uh, more natural, I guess, in my hand positioning. 
for them to be closed because of the the signal and the muscles deteriorating it kind of shrivels up your hands a little bit i can open them it just takes a little bit of work that's all so that is what is wrong with me that's why i'm in a wheelchair i also have eller demo syndrome which is basically uh, means that my joints are a little bit extra flexible and wonky which if you have that and you can't feel your legs there is a high risk for dislocation and things like that so i do at times pull myself up with a walker for exercise or to cross over thresholds that I cannot. But because I put all of that pressure on my arms, I'm at risk for like shoulder dislocations or elbow dislocations, things like that. And it's just not fun. It, it can be a little bit painful. I also, unfortunately, being paralyzed um, in your legs doesn't mean that you're not in pain. For some reason, your body, when you're when um, a part of your body kind of disconnects from your brain, your brain sends out just random pain signals to kind of let you know something is wrong. And there's nothing really you can do about that. So you do get used to it eventually. I am a little bit more used to it than most people because I've had this my entire life. It's a lifelong genetic disease. It's deteriorating. There's no... There's no way to reverse it, and there's no cure. Um, unfortunately, there's no way to stop the degeneration. Sometimes it does affect your lungs and your breathing, and I won't know if I'm going to be affected in that way unless I get there. There are people who go their entire life with this disease and need no more than some leg braces later in life. And then there are other people like me who have it on the more severe side and end up not being able to walk or end up in a wheelchair. So there's really no way to tell which version of this disease you're going to get. It's kind of like a roll of the dice. And um, that's just kind of the lot that I drew. Now, one of my children is confirmed to have inherited and we're going to check on another one. I do have seven kids. I'm still a mom. I still try to be a productive member of society and my disability hasn't really slowed me down too much. I try very hard to stay positive and to uh, remain positive and to keep my mind clear and healthy in spite of whatever my body is doing. If you guys need help with anything like that or if you want me to talk about my experience with that and my experience with keeping a more positive mindset when you're dealing with things like this, or when you're a spoonie or you have a chronic illness, let me know. I do also have POTS, uh, which I don't know. It's polyorthostatic um, tachycardia syndrome, and I'm just used to that. I There's a lot of different ways you can keep it under control, you know, not taking super hot showers, not standing up too fast, drinking lots of water, taking vitamins. All of those things can help mitigate the... Um, the symptoms of that disease in itself. So that is it. That is everything. That's my entire life and disability story. If you guys want to know about how I actually live with these things and how I thrive with these things, because I don't want any of you guys to be sad. I want everybody around me um, to be happy and thrive and to learn how to be happy no matter what their current situation is giving disability and chronic illness seem to be running rampant right now. I have no idea why, but my hope is that everyone living with a chronic illness can be inspired to find and create their own space of happiness, no matter what the situation is. So hopefully, if there's any way that I can help you with that, please let me know down in the comments. And if I answered all of your questions, then leave me a heart. And if I didn't and you have more questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer you there. If you guys would like to see more from this channel, if you want to see a little bit more of my life, if you want me to give you a weekly update or things like that or give you some of the behind the scenes of what I do as a content creator, then let me know that as well. Let me know what you would like to see from this channel. In the past, I've always just put up things that I've been drawing and working on and just kind of voice them over 
just to share a little bit of my thoughts or what's going on in the world or my thoughts on what's going on in the world or just anything kind of uh, simple like that. So let me know what you're up to, what you're doing. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so, so much. I know you guys could be doing absolutely anything and you chose to spend a little of your time here with me and I appreciate you so much for that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.